John McCarthy, American computer scientist and cognitive scientist, famous for coining the term artificial intelligence back in 1955, famously said this when he was asked, when will AGI be here? He said, somewhere between five and 500 years, and we're gonna need a few Einsteins to get there. Artificial intelligence and the coming age of AGI is no longer a thing of science fiction. It's already here, transforming the way we live, work, and think about the future. But what will this mean for the economy? Will AI push millions of people out of work? And when will it happen? I believe this is one of the most critical questions of our time. How will AI affect the economy? This trickles down to every one of us in the work we do in any and every industry, from white collar to blue collar and beyond. The best question you could ask yourself every day is this, how can I adapt to the coming new age and the age of AI we're living in right now that officially began in the 2020s? On my YouTube channel, I've covered job displacement and AI quite a bit. I talked about 1 billion jobs gone by 2030, how AI will kill white collar work, how it will even touch and affect blue collar collar industries, but today I want to touch on the economy as a whole. A report by McKinsey has predicted that AI will add $13 trillion to our global economic activity. And by 2030, 70% of all companies will have embraced the AI revolution and adopted at least one type of AI technology. A report by Goldman Sachs has said that AI will directly replace 300 million full-time jobs. And researchers from the University of Pennsylvania and Open and AI have said that it's the white collar workers earning around $80,000 a year that are the most likely to be affected by workforce automation. But even beyond white collar, an MIT and Boston University report predicted 2 million manufacturing jobs going away by 2025. Customer service, receptionist, accounting, bookkeeping, sales, research and analysis, warehouse work, underwriting, and retail were the top industries set to be hit by automation first. In 2022, I made a bold move seeing the growth of GPT itself and what was happening inside generative pre-trained transformers. It seemed natural to me that writing was going to be directly affected by the emergence of AI. And so I sold a hundred person human writing agency. In 2023, I started working full-time in AI as the president of Brandwell. At this stage, AI can't write, research, compile, and put together better content than a human could, but a human still needs to drive the wheel and direct the ship. The key really is in knowing which AI tools to use for which job. And if you're in a job not using AI, chances are you still haven't found the right AI tool yet. Because the problem of adaption is usually not AI, it's usually user error. At the same time, we still have a lot of obstacles to overcome in different industries, especially health and medical, that are road blocking the use of AI in their systems. We still need really good directors, managers, C-suite people, soft skills, high levels of emotional intelligence, being able to work well with each other, make good strategic decisions, collaborate well, critically think. These are the skills that will go hand in hand with driving automation and human cooperation right now and in the next months and years. By the end of 2025, 65% of retail jobs are predicted to be replaced placed by automation. If you see what's happening over at Figure, Boston Dynamics, Tesla Bot, Optimus, China's Unitree, even Elon Musk at the All In Podcast Summit said that he believes Optimus is just three iterations from being ready for widespread use. And unlike the scenario in iRobot, with three humans to every one robot, he believes we will have three robots to every one human. Wild times. Dave Shapiro puts it this way, and I completely agree agree. If machines are better, faster, cheaper, and safer in all economically meaningful tasks, well, it's just a matter of time till corporations and businesses adapt. Dave has a great analogy that I think really puts a picture on this. Imagine you need a life-saving surgery and you could pick between a human doctor and a robot doctor. The human doctor costs you upwards of $10,000, $20,000. It's going to take you three weeks to recover. And that doctor has a 5% fail rate, which 
means 5% of patients have died on that surgery table. Now you have a robot doctor. That robot has a 99.9% .9 success rate. It can do that same surgery for just $5,000 and your recovery time is much faster because of the precision of that surgery. Which are you going to pick? It's always going to be the robot doctor. We are approaching an age in which that scenario will come true. It's just a matter of time. And I believe that future will be here sooner than the predicted 2100 full automation of all human labor and AGI. I think we could be looking at this future as soon as 2029, which is Ray Kurzweil's prediction and I believe he's spot on. However, I do think we have to take predictions about the future with a grain of salt. The truth is we have to function in the time and place we need to function as well as look ahead to the future. I'm a big believer in opportunity and trying to time the market. It's how I've been successful in business. It's how I sold a hundred person company at the right time. But even economists struggle to predict the actual future. In 2013, it was predicted that nearly half of all American jobs would be automated by 2023. And that just hasn't happened. But we are seeing major waves toward that. For example, Amazon's warehouses are already semi-automated with robots as warehouse workers. Humans are still needed to handle the more delicate tasks like picking up individual articles. But the question is how long until robots can do that too? We're going to see job displacement, but also job creation. We're going to see the opportunity of new verticals and the potential of something I'm really excited about, which is work unattached to the drive towards a paycheck. I do think that universal basic income, AKA UBI does have its place in this new economy. The question is who controls that? How do we create a UBI that doesn't make dependent serfs out of the human race, but still gives people economic agency over their lives. Jock Fresco's resource-based economy is a very interesting idea I've been exploring where we could actually put AI and automation in charge of resource allocation, eliminating the need for money completely. And instead of working for income, people could contribute to society in meaningful ways. I think this goes hand in hand with an idea I'm a big proponent of called the meaning economy, something that my fellow creator David Shapiro is an expert in speaking to. What will it look like when we can disattach ourselves from the industrial revolution's unhealthy push where our value became dependent on our productivity, driving us away from the state of human being and towards a state of human doing, which is not a natural state for us. However, ideas like UBI, RBE require huge shifts in political, social, and economic structures. I don't think that we are going to have the final say in how the economy gets built, but I do think that government leaders, world leaders, legislators are absolutely going to turn to the industry, which is us, the people working in industry for some of the answers on how to regulate AI, on how to build around a life of value and make sure that UBI gets distributed fairly to all without constraints. When we look at welfare programs and the near $2 trillion spent per year on social welfare programs in the US alone, a lot of that doesn't work. What would happen if we removed all the regulatory restrictions around that cash? How would people's lives benefit as we see the emergence of general purpose AI, which could be anywhere from 2029 to 2045. Like John McCarthy said, the guy who coined AI as a term, AGI is anywhere from five to 500 years away. The world will definitely have to adapt. In the new economy shaped by these changes, we're going to see a demand for meaning where humans will strongly prefer other humans instead of a machine. I think that decentralized ownership of the profits of automation is a viable answer in this new economy. But with society and new economics in general, you never want to rip and replace because that just creates starvation, death, struggle, warfare, and a lot of bad things that world leaders typically don't want. It's going to take decades for us to reach a new societal paradigm built on the back of total work automation. The way we can avoid making decentralized ownership, not communism or socialism, is by making sure it doesn't rely on the government, but is rather a technocratic solution. The hat tip on this 
definitely goes to David Shapiro again. I'm learning so much from him. There's a wealth of knowledge there on what this new society will look like. I'm very much a student, a critical thinker, an observer of all of this, and most of all, a believer, an opportunist. Hope hasn't left my dreams for a future. I think we can very much achieve a non-government-led, decentralized, citizen-owned stakeholder share of the future that we helped shape. LLMs themselves were built on the back of over a decade of billions of people using the internet. Artificial intelligence is by the people and it should be for the people. And I believe we can get there. We're going to need multiple layers and levels of decentralization. DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations are a powerful solution to how we can govern all levels of life and all levels of decision making, whether it's city, state, government, education, you name it. I believe the chances of us getting to a transcendent society are pretty high. In general, most of us want what's best for each other. And the people that don't, their voices tend to die out. Just look at history. We can step away from the Hollywood narrative of Skynet, Terminator, etc. And we can look towards a very different and very real future. This is just the beginning of the conversation on how AI will affect the economy. Be sure to subscribe to my channel at Julia McCoy to continue to tune in to these conversations conversations. I always appreciate hearing from you in the comments. So let me know what you thought. I'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts on what's coming now and later in the AI era. And as always, I'll see you right here down the next AI rabbit hole.